Hello guys and guys, and welcome back to another After Effects tutorial here on Tuesday on the channel. So thank you all for tuning in. Today I'm going to be talking about one of the most important things in After Effects and one of the many things that really sets it apart from other motion graphic editors. Um, and that is the, um, the ability to keyframe pretty much everything you do in After Effects. Now, let's start off really basic here. Um, keyframing is basically the um, the process of manipulating objects over time. So if you see here, I have three boxes set up. The top one, we will be showing uh, linear um, keyframing, which basically means from point to point. Um, the main characteristic of linear keyframing is uh, it's very start to finish robotic and there's no easing whatsoever. Uh, next up, uh, we I haven't keyframed any of these, but I'm going to demonstrate each one in just a second. Uh, next up, we have what's called Easy Ease um, in After Effects. That basically means it's going to slowly ease into the motion and slowly um, come to a stop. Um, I prefer this one over Linear, but of course it depends on the situation. And then Bezier, which is just kind of... Um, it, it's... Um, I don't know if you do a lot of work with Adobe Illustrator, you know what it is, but it's kind of hard to explain. Um, but basically, it, it, it does pretty much the same thing as Easy E, is just a little bit less intense. Um, so, anyways, let's go here to Linear and let's go swivel down the triangle here and let's go to Transform and Position. Now, when you click the stopwatch on any property here in After Effects, which you can do, you can you can keyframe all of these. But when you click the stopwatch, it's basically telling it, okay, I want this property right here the position property I want it to change at a different time um, so basically I'm going to hit the stopwatch and then basically I'm saying when the diamond here that the diamond signifies a, a keyframe right there um, so the diamond says at this point I want the box to be exactly where it is now I'm gonna go ahead to about two seconds and I'm gonna move it to where I want it to be at two seconds at the other side of the screen. Now you'll notice when I preview it, it's just rendering right now and then there we go. It goes and it stops. There's no slowing down before it stops, it just halts. Um, it's very, very robotic. That's the only thing I can really think of to describe it. It's just kind of point to point and it just stops. Now that's what we call linear keyframing and it comes in handy for all sorts of things but yet again it, it has to do with uh, what you're going for. Um, easy ease I tend to prefer um, for traditional uh, position moving. So I'm going to go ahead and create a position keyframe there and I'm going to go ahead to the same two seconds but this time we're going to see a difference. Notice how the red box is still moving. Um, that's because we left the keyframes there and it's still doing its thing over there in the corner but right now we're not focusing on it. So I'm going to move it to the same spot, hold shift to snap it into moving directly horizontal. All right, I'm going to place it right there. And now we'll turn it into an easy ease keyframe. Um, so to do this, you can either hit F9 on your keyboard or you can right click having both of these selected. You can right click and then go to keyframe assistant, easy ease. Notice how they turn into like an hourglass shape. That's pretty much the characteristic of them. If you want to turn any of these keyframes back when you're working on a project, just highlight um, all the ones you want to be turned back, hold control, and then click on one. And I'll turn all of them back. I'm just going to turn those back into easy ease real quick because we're demonstrating that. So it's gonna, just going to render out here. And you'll see the difference. It, it slows down. Or it, it's, it has a slow start. But then once it gets going, it's a little bit faster than linear, and then it slows to a halt. So it's a little bit more organic in nature. Um, if you pretty much look at anything in life, it's not directly like start and stop. Um, if you're driving a car and you hit the brakes, it's going to take a while to get to a stop. So it just kind of stimulates an, an easy in and an easy out. And it's really great to show a demonstration like this where you see both of them side by side. I really think it's effective to kind of see the difference. Um, and over here, we're going to go to Bezier. Um, I call it Bezier just because it looks like what it sounds, but correct pr pronunciation is Bezier. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and do the position again. Keyframe at the beginning. Um, we'll just add the keyframes and turn it into a Bezier at the end. So I'm just going to move it like I did the others, holding shift. And right there, we should be good. 
it's linear right now but let's go ahead and change that select both of them and then um, oh, double click for a second all right so right click one of them and then go to keyframe interpolation um, there's a lot of stuff here let's just worry about the um, temporal interpolation basically affects how it changes over time it's basically saying changing the keyframe all right and we're gonna go to um, a bezier and we're gonna click okay it does change it to look like the easy ease um, but that's just one of the characteristics so notice how it, it it's a little bit different um, it kind of has a fast start um, it's very very subtle I don't know if you can see it it's pretty much like linear it's pretty much like linear um, actually I think it's almost exactly like linear this might be a bad example to show it um, but anyways I, I guess that kind of gives you the feel for it um, but uh, let's go ahead and show you some more in-depth things especially with uh, motion not just uh, forward to back but um, let's let's go up and down as well and I want to show you some stuff there so we're gonna keyframe position like before and let's just go over right here Oop. I started to change the scale um, so let's go right here so it goes doop 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 um, I think yeah this is a little bit off-center um, because the anchor point is actually over here instead of in the middle so I'm just gonna get my anchor point point moving tool and I'm gonna move the anchor point into the middle there so that should fix it uh, although I think we will have to re-keyframe it so there's little lessons to be learned everywhere okay I'm gonna ram preview that and basically you'll see it's um, it's very sudden with its movements it's not really smooth um, so let's go ahead and here is where um, some a different thing will come into play if we go back to the keyframe interpolation window um, if we go to um, spatial interpolation um, before we were working with how it changes in time meaning that the start and end will be slower and then it'll ease into it depending on what you click on but now we're dealing with spatial uh, spatial means you see these corners here well they're rounded off that's that has to do with spatial keyframing if we change just the linear under the spatial you'll notice they get zigzagged but if we go back um, to keyframe interpolation and then we go back to what it was before. I think it was at an auto bezier. I think it was just bezier. Um, but if we change this to linear, like it is before, those will be rounded. That's because the spatial interpolation has nothing to do, or sorry, the temporal interpolation, like we change this to linear, it's still rounded because the temporal um, interpolation has nothing to do with the shape of stuff. The spatial interpolation has to do with the shape. So if you're trying to make the shape of the corners jagged, you're going to have to change just the linear, not not temporal. Temporal has to do with when it starts and finishes, or between these, it, the time. So it looks like my recording program kind of glitched out there. Um, basically, I want to demonstrate to you guys what roving across time um, does. It's another option under the keyframe interpolation, and it's actually really, really helpful. Um, so if I just go here and I do my same old position here and then I have it go really fast over here or I have it go really slow over there and then in a short amount of time it has to jump all the way to the other side. So if I play it back right now it goes really slow and then all of a sudden picks up. So what if I wanted it um, without, you know, there's no way I could get this to be exactly the same. I, I could get close. I mean that actually looks pretty good. Dang. Um, but that's besides the point. So say I didn't want to spend the time to space them out correctly so it went the even speed the whole way. Well, we could actually do something what's called roving across time. Now if we click the rove across time check right here, or if we actually go to the keyframe interpolation then um, select rove across time, um, it'll actually do that for me. Nice and smooth. And I didn't have to move any keyframes, it did it at the exact spot it needed to be. And um, the computer pretty much did all the work for me. So if I go ahead and select both of these um, by holding shift and selecting both, um, 
if I select these, I can then go ahead and do my easy ease without even affecting it. So easy ease is in and then easy ease is out. So it's really helpful and actually, if we go change this keyframe like that, everything still applies and it goes the same speed the whole way through. So it's really useful when doing different sort of things. Um, also the cool thing about position keyframes is that if you click on the keyframe right here, you can actually click these little handles and move it around. So say I wanted to do something like this. Well, it, it does it. It's kind of weird, but um, I can manipulate the keyframe to do whatever I want pretty much. Um, hold shift when moving the playhead to snap to snap to the keyframes. It's uh, really helpful. So if I go ahead and click this, I mean, you can move it all around. And I think if you hold alt, you can move each side independently. Um, yeah, it's really, really funky. And you can do a whole bunch of different stuff with it. So um, that's pretty much position keyframing. But I also wanted to show you guys that you can pretty much do this with any other parameter. You can even mix and match them. So not only can I do position, but I can do scale, rotation, opacity, and tech. Why not position still? So notice how I wasn't at the beginning of the video when I clicked all those stopwatches. So it made the keyframes right in the middle of it. So I'm just going to click and drag them. Hold shift to snap it to zero. And there we go. We have our keyframes at zero. And then let me actually uh, make sure I'm at the same place. If I move it when I'm not at the place before, it automatically creates a new keyframe over there. So I'm going to go to where the keyframes already were. And I'm going to go ahead and move it to where I wanted to start. And then I'm going to go to one minute, move over here. Rotation, you're not going to be able to see because it's a sphere. You can't really see rotation. But the scale, we can actually unlink the height width. If I try to move it now, it just moves it evenly. But if I undo that, if I unclick the chain link right here, it'll unlock them so I can like warp it. Um, so I keyframe that. Notice how it looks like it's flipping now because I went... Not only did I do that, but I went over itself. I went over it. So let me just undo that. Um, so it kind of flips. Um, kind of a weird effect. And let's go throw some opacity in there. Notice how there's no keyframe in between the first and last opacity like there was with the position. So it evenly does the opacity. If you look down at this bottom row right here, it evenly does it between the first point and the last point. So it doesn't really change. If I put that all the way down to zero, you'll see it'll slowly fade out. If I put the first one at 100, 100% opacity, and the last one at zero, it just uh, gradually fades throughout the whole thing. Well, let's say I wanted to go from uh, full opacity to zero in this last little bit right here. Well, if I just move the 100% keyframe over there, we don't need one over here. It just stays at 100 until it hits that and then it fades out so it kind of just the position rotation kind of just stopped there so let's go ahead and add some more can't really see it but i can highlight it and do my best here so i'll just move it over here now we can play around with the rotation so let's move the rotation just a little bit and let's just play around the scale why not so that notice how there's no keyframe in between with the rotation as well so i'm just going to add one right here um, I'm going to add a rotation at zero. Okay. So right now it does its flip and then it goes in there and just does that. So this is what mix and matching does or what it looks like at least. Um, if I, if I ran preview, notice how there's a whole bunch of time behind it. See how the playhead is still moving. And it won't it it won't loop again until it reaches the very end. Um, we can actually change our work area to end right here, so I can click N on my keyboard, and then I'll shorten it up to here, so it just plays it, reaches the end, and starts over. Um, so that's what that looks like. Kind of interesting, but there is some jerky movement right around here. It gets there, and then it goes doink. <laughs> the rotation just starts all abruptly. So let's go ahead and turn that into an easy ease like we did before. So, dunk, dunk. Still kind of sudden, but you know what? It helped it out. So also, the, um, the 
the scale changing shape right here it's kind of sudden as well so let's easy use that one as well so it gets there and then it kind of does its thing all right it's looking really nice but the position kind of starts and stops so let's mix and match again let's add some roving across time and now you notice it's a lot smoother it's actually really smooth um rotation um let's let's go ahead and add rove across time for all these and so let's, let's see what that looks like so rove across time we we can't actually do rove across time when we have our um easy ease so um we're gonna have to deal with that but i think that pretty much that pretty much showcases all of them working together i mean i did easy ease on the uh on the opacity and it kind of slowly fades out um, let's go ahead and widen widen out the time it takes for the um, for the sphere to disappear and that that's looking really cool I I mean I started out with just a boring old circle and I made it do something that looked like really kind of cool so um, <laughs> that's pretty much it I mean keyframe manipulation um, definitely it's pretty interesting when you're working with a whole bunch of different parameters. I mean, I can even go haywire right now and go over to my effects and presets and add a hue and saturation. Click and drag that on right onto our circle. And you know what? I could just go ahead and click colorize. I mean, this might be over a few of you guys' heads, but I'm just going for it. Um, and I'm just going to change the lightness, saturation. Gosh, I don't know. Let's, uh, let's play around with it. And I'm just going to keyframe the hue. So it's going to start out red and then maybe it'll end up, I don't know what color that's going to be, but yeah, I don't know, doing some trippy stuff. <laughs> so you never know what, uh, what crazy stuff might happen in After Effects, guys. Uh, so there you go. Very rudimentary, very, very rudimentary uh, example of keyframing. In After Effects, um, this was kind of basic, and if it left you kind of confused, that's okay. I mean, we're gonna be uh, working with keyframes for pretty much every After Effects tutorial, so if you don't get it, I'm sure you'll get the hint after the next few tutorials that I release. Um, <laughs> but it, it, it's really uh, a lot of fun when you get to more complex effects, and um, I mean, it, it's just the foundation of what you can do with this program. So um, I really hope I helped out a whole bunch of you guys. Um, just another quick tip, so let's say you closed out the triangle and then you couldn't find all these keyframes again. Well, if you highlight the layer, you press U on your keyboard, it'll automatically open up all the properties that are keyframed. And um, it's just a really simple way to get back to your keyframes. So that's pretty much it. Um, hopefully, like I said, you guys really got something out of this. Um, I, I really hope you did. And um, it. I, I'm glad to share my knowledge of keyframing and After Effects with you guys because I really wish something like this existed when I was trying to figure this out. I mean, gosh, it wasn't even until this tutorial I really fully understood Bezier, uh, which smooths out the transition between uh, maybe fast and slow transitions. It just kind of smooths it together. Um, so, I don't know. Hopefully you got something out of this. If you did, make sure to share it with your friends so you can spread the knowledge. Um, around uh, like and favorites are always appreciated and subscribe if you want to stay tuned for next Tuesday's tutorial as well so do all that fancy fancy stuff and I guess I will see you guys next Tuesday for my next tutorial so thank you all for so much for watching and I'll see you guys then peace out